Oh. What's up, everybody? This is uh, Ninja, AK Black, coming in for another beginner's tutorial video. Uh, today, I want to discuss the modified map known as GSO, which, for those of you who aren't aware, GSO stands for Ground Scout Only, which is um, a stipulation or rule that a lot of uh, like mod players used to ask for since they didn't like getting having to deal with like jump jets and air units. But we're gonna have to deal with the Hitman version. It's all right. Uh, I believe Dead Last is the original creator of this map. But uh, anyways. GSO, in my opinion, is a very underrated map, and it's an excellent map for new players, and even veteran players to play if they're rusty. Uh, I always recommend hopping into a GSO game and just uh, you know getting the feel back, um, whipping out those uh, four or five ref uh, build orders, and do that for a couple games. Uh, you know, it's a, a no pressure environment. Uh, like, it doesn't matter. I mean, the winner and the loser in these maps is usually all luck based on, you know, what the teams are. So, you know, it's, it's just a, it's a really good map to practice your fundamentals, your early game work, and just practice getting your buildings down, getting your infantry out, uh, m moving, moving your infantry around, you know, basic defense with titans and infantry. It, it's a good map for just uh, brushing up, you know, and also for learning for new players. If you're if you're a new player or just trying to transition out of, of um, you know, hacked up maps like Giants of War and Visceroid maps, this is a great place to start. But uh, I notice uh, every time I play it, there's always at least one or two people that just have absolutely no clue what to do. So, this video is for those people. Uh, I, rec I encourage anybody who sees a player that just does extremely poorly, like they just you know they just don't even know where to start, uh, send them a link to this video, and hopefully we can get some more competitive people playing on it. And hopefully they can eventually transition to playing other maps that take a little bit more skill. So what I'm going to show you here today is, you know, just the, the best strategy that is the most consistent and works most of the time. And it's what I do almost every time I play this map, and I, I very rarely get overpowered unless it's multiple people on another team, and I just don't have any backup on my side. Um, does this does it mean you're going to be able to memorize everything that I'm going to show you here today and then go and defeat a veteran player? Absolutely not. You're not going to be able to touch veteran players until you've, you've done this hundreds of times, until it, you've done it so many times that it's um, you know it's instinct. You don't have to think about anything. You just have to whip it out, and then you can start practicing on your unit control and, and uh, just m more advanced gameplay, which uh, I'll eventually make more videos on in the future. But uh, first thing I'm going to touch on is the build order. So I'm just going to run through it here, uh, sh show an example real quick, and then talk about it. So I, I do recommend that people start out with GDI before getting into NODs. GDI is just... Um, a little bit easier to deal with. Nod requires much more extensive unit control to be effective. Um, you know, Nod can be very effective on this map if uh, played correctly. The artillery have no equal if you can get past the the Titan Zerges at the beginning. So. You know, but that being said, Titans are just so much easier to learn than combining SAM sites, artillery, infantry, EMP, etc. So anyways, let's uh, run through the, an example here. What the yes, fuck sir. is that? Classic hitman. 
Alright. Let's get rid of this guy to get the, the noise out of the way. thing that you need to do when playing on this map is determine what your position is. You know, there's it's a very simple basic map. This is really frustrating. Infantry reporting. Awaiting out and clear. Alright, so anyway, so there's four spots. One, two, three, and four. You need to determine where your spot is, and also whether you're on the left side of the map or the right side of the map, because your Tiberium is going to be on the edge, and you want to make sure that your refinery is placed next to the Tiberium. Um, I mean, the, the reason for that is simple. The closer it is to the patches, the less travel time your harvester has to go from the refinery to the patch, and the, the less travel time is the more money you're going to have. So, um, not real much, not much choice but to go um, power plant, barracks, refinery, but do make sure to go power plants, barracks, refinery. If you make a power plant and then a refinery with no barracks, then you are going to have to go uh, several seconds without being able to pump infantry. And when you are this close to your enemies, you must be able to counter infantry immediately. So under no circumstances should you ever build a refinery before a barracks. Um, so what you're going to notice people do on this map is make large groups of infantry. And that's something you just don't have a choice but to do because if you do choose not to do that and they choose to do that, they're going to overrun you. So there's no real option except for everybody to stalemate with infantry in the early game. Um, the the only way that's ever going to not be the case is if uh, teams are Unit reporting. not equal. So I mean, if there's a, a big gap in teams, and uh, you know somebody on the, a team that's overpowered might decide to go for a fast tech while the other players handle the infantry. But if if everybody's equal, if all eight players on the map are the same skill level, and you know one person on the map does not make infantry that's going to cause a shift in who's going to win or lose in that game. So the way to do that is to make four or five refineries back to back. I prefer personally to do five. Um, the only time I ever do less than five is if I'm you know, really confident that my allies are going to be able to hold their own with infantry. If I think that they're going to get overpowered, then I'm going to make a fifth refinery so I can continue pumping infantry. But your goal for economy is to get two refineries and five harvesters ASAP. And the whole whole time, just you can pretty much do it the whole time when you have blue Tiberium like this. With green Tiberium, it's a little bit different. You've got to, got to pause the infantry at uh, key times and bring your harvesters back a little bit early in order to be maximally efficient but with blue you're you're pretty okay so the the entire time that you're building these refineries back to back you need to be pumping out infantry as well so it's going to be a little off for me when i do this because i'm had a steady 60 fps here since i'm playing by myself but if you were had eight other people, the latency would drop this to you know some, somewhere in the 50s, ideally. Obviously, a lot less if there's somebody who lags in the game. But that will cause the um, production to slow down just enough to not ever go past what the the harvesters are capable of bringing in. So, you know, first refiner down, immediately start building your second. And just keep on bringing the infantry out. As you're bringing them out, get them kind of in anti-scout positions. Anti-scouting on this map is not that important because there's really nothing to 
worry about. You know, scouting early is only important if you're afraid somebody might uh, be going fast tat. So, so as soon as you get this first refinery down, immediately sell it, and then start the third. So, yeah, the only, like I said, the only reason you ever want to scout early is if you think somebody might be going fast tech, which is often suicide on this map, so it's pretty uncommon you're going to have to deal with that. But um, regardless, you're going to scout them in a minute anyway once you engage with the infantry. Unless you get overpowered, then you're going to be in trouble, but the idea is to overpower them. So third refinery's down, drop it, sell it. Start on the fourth one. After your uh, third refinery's down, you're going to be getting pretty close to zero cash here, so you don't want to you want to kind of chill out on the infantry. After pumping between three and three and a half refineries, you're going to have enough to feel pretty secure in what you got, and enough to go ahead and engage and uh, start sorting out the infantry between the players. So drop your fourth. And from here on, you can use your judgment. Do you need to continue pumping infantry to help your allies or to, you know, survive and keep countering your own guy? Or can you back off and uh, just get the money piling up and get your fifth refinery down? Once you have uh, your fifth refinery down, you're going to be able to kind of pump infantry at will and never go low cash. One thing you want to look out for is how far your harvesters are traveling up. Um, harvesters on this game always travel up naturally, so in a, in a few minutes if they keep on... And it, when, when they leave the refinery they always go back to where they stopped on the, on the last load. So he's going to drive all the way back up here. Now he's going to eat all the way up to here, and he's going to come back, and then the next time he's going to start here, and you know, eventually he's going to get all the way up here. So you want to keep an eye on that, Sir, and instead orders. of letting him go all the way up here, way redirect out. him to Unit Tiberium to closer to the refinery, and that will substantially increase your income, Sir? as opposed to having Sir? all of your um, harvesters traveling all the way up to the top of the map, because that's just unnecessary travel time. Um, being on the top, obviously, makes that irrelevant. So yes, top spots do have a slight economical advantage compared to every other spot, but it's not an advantage as long as you're paying attention yes, and preventing sir. this from happening. So anyway, after you get your fifth refinery down, uh, take care of your power situation. I usually go ahead and get two power turbines down, and I like to drop a component tower to get all that out of the way, all the cheap stuff out of the way before I start going for the more expensive stuff. So once your fifth uh, refinery's down, you have power turbine, power turbine, component tower, then war factory. And as soon as your war factory's down, um, you never stop building titans. Unit ready. Unit ready. Waiting on my way. Unit recording. Yes, sir. So at this point in the game, you've probably exhausted most of your infantry count in uh, either attacking or defending versus the other guys. Drop your war factory, and then go ahead and build a, an additional power plant. Remember, non-stop titans at this point. So for this power plant, you're going to want to kind of place it towards the enemies. And the reason for this is because is you're going to want to um, be able to build your EMP close enough to be able to fire it at them. You don't want to build the EMP back here, but getting an EMP after this point is your, your next priority. So go ahead and get your radar. get your EMP down and either power your radar off or sell it if you need a boost in cash but you don't want the the power from the radar to interfere with the power for the EMP so right now um, you're in a pretty good spot you have uh, 
your EMPs down, EMPs charging, you've been building Titans. Uh, you're, as soon as your EMPs ready, you're ready to start doing uh, some high damage attacks. And in, in a game that's not lagging, with, with this uh, amount of economy, you should be able to pump Titans and infantry at the same time. And if you can keep that going, that's a very effective combination of units to use. Um, you won't have enough money to build structures, uh, war factory, and barracks units at the same time, but you can handle two. You can handle two building options, you won't be able to support three. So if, once you see that you got yourself at a, at a place where you're ahead, uh, maybe stop the infantry production and go ahead and build an additional refinery. While uh, five harvesters will um, support you very well, if the if the game stalemates and starts going long, you're going to need more. You're going to need to get uh, seven harvesters. So if you build this rough, sell it, and, and build another one, all the while you can, can just continue to endlessly pump titans. Make sure you don't go low power so your production doesn't uh, get interrupted. If you need to, um, build an additional power plant in between this, these steps, build uh, more power turbines, place uh, RPGs and SAM sites as necessary. But uh, now that you have your seventh refinery, you can start to tech up. There's not much point in teching up before this because you don't ever want to stop Titan production. But once you have the economy is sufficient to start pumping bombers and Titans at the same time, tech up and start doing exactly that. So now we have plenty of economy to be able to build everything at once. We can build Titans, we can build bombers, we can build infantry and build structures without ever going low cash. So at this point, all you can do is continue to just uh, increase the size of your base. Uh, one, one thing to, one way to do that uh, and have, a, have it uh, matter is to kind of build into your allies. So you'll have other MCVs here, other bases, but if you just build like your power plants up into them, if they're struggling more than you are, or the you know, the players up here are stronger than the players down here, you can help them out, build uh, RPGs and, and SAM sites in them, get them bunked up so they can catch up. You can also build a, a barracks up here start uh, getting some infantry to help them out, and you can get a, another EMP to be in range of all this as well. Uh, I do recommend a spare EMP, because if they get an EMP also, they will try to EMP where your EMP is, which will not allow you to use that particular infantry EMP reporting. until it wears off. So you want to build a spare EMP, and you want it to be far away from your other EMP. So that way they can't disable both of them at the same time. Um, so, start over here real quick, just so I can go over one little point. Which is placement. Placement on this map is only really important if you're on a corner spot, which is spot 1, 4, 5, or 8. So we'll go all the way down to spot 4 just to demonstrate. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I should have changed maps. So when you're down on these corners, what you want to avoid is building on this back wall, and that's because you're going to have a, a partner MCV right here that's going to need to utilize that place for his refineries. So if both of you are building in this area, you're going to have a, a conflict of space, and uh, that's just going to make things a little bit harder for you guys. So 
make sure when you're on any of the corner spots, you know, this, this applies for the other side and the top spots. What you want to do is build your refineries down here instead. That way, the, uh, the guy that's base is right here has all this area to place his refineries here, not fighting for the same area. Now, beyond that, just to remember the same principles of uh, placement that apply for any other map, which is you don't want to place your buildings... Basically, you want your buildings to be as close as they possibly can, but not so close that a disruptor or a uh, bomber attack can hit two buildings at the same time. So, the spacing on these is good. Usually, uh, three spaces apart is that general rule. Like, um, if I place my war factory right here, then if a disruptor landed right here on my MCV, it would be able to shoot through, target my war factory, and, and attack both buildings at the same time. If I, you know, placed it right here, um, you, it, it might you could, the disruptor could still do it if it landed in the exact right spot, but you'd be very vulnerable to a, um, a large amount of bombers coming over, targeting your MCV, and if they fly this way, they're going to destroy the war factory on the way to the MCV. So you want them just far enough that that's not possible, but at the same time close enough, as close as possible. And the reason you want it close is because if you are being attacked by um, disruptors or multiple, um, you know, getting attacked from multiple sides, you don't want to have to drive your yes, your defense from, you know, all the way over here, all the way to over here. You want to be able to have them centralized and be able to, you know, get to one side of the base to the other as quickly as possible. So that's Sir, the the rules to follow. Yes, um, there's a few other little tips and tricks you can do for defensive purposes, like uh, making a triangle of RPGs like this. Um, the reason this is a good strategy is because if you have an RPG and somebody lands something right next to it, an RPG cannot hit anything that is within one grid unit away from or one grid unit right next to the RPG. So people can land a, like a disruptor right here, and then this RPG by itself will be defenseless. But if you have a triangle of RPGs and you still have two that can shoot that any of those spots, and that applies to anywhere, any one of these. And then it also has good coverage if they land outside, at least one will be hitting it. So this uh, layout here, there's nowhere that they can land and not get hit by at least one RPG. Uh, beyond that, you know, think about where you would want to fly a disruptor in to your base to attack it if you were the enemy, and you know, drop some SAM sites and just get some, some good coverage. Usually, you know, usually three SAM sites will be able to cover enough area, but at the very least, have one central SAM site. That way that uh, they can't just land and then get up and move here, then get up and move here, and get up and move there. They kind of got to pick one spot and, uh, and stay on the ground after they get there. So if you only have time to build one SAM site, build one right in the middle of your base. So they're not going to have any trouble getting to where they want to land, but once they land, they can't get back up. Yeah, because no matter what, if if you placed one out here, then, you know they're going to have free reign over here, and that one SAM site is not going to prevent them from landing on your MCV anyways. So this is the the best spot. Um, yes, sir. Yeah, th those uh, th this information should get you started on this map. That should uh, allow you to at least get past the first few minutes without getting annihilated by infantry. Then just uh, practice from there. Think about your strategy, think about your timing, think about when you want to engage with the enemy or just uh, stay defensive. 
Uh, I'll do one more game here to try and just kind of do a, a fluid movement of completing the, the five ref. Like I said, it's not going to be perfect because... Who's this asshole? Still in my name. Uh, it's not going to be perfect just because of the, the latency playing by yourself is not consistent with um, multiplayer gameplay, but it should be relatively close. Unit Messer. On my way. God damn it. Unit reporting. Alright, so power plant. We're in the bottom spot, so we're gonna build forward here. Since we know that the Tiberium's right here, we don't have to build structures towards it in order to get closer to it. And we're immediately gonna start yes, sending infantry. I'll take the first one I build. Yes, kind of send it to the enemy just to try and uh, open up and see what they're doing. Use the next one to uh, scout my surrounding area. And we'll start setting up anti-scouts. Remember anti-scouts is uh, three, it takes three light infantry to kill a infantry that's running past. Come and never stop. And when you sell the uh, refiner, you're going to get an extra thousand dollars. If you're not on a spot like this, remember to control your harvester to get the closer Tiberium instead of traveling away from the harvester. So as you can see right now, I went low cash. If uh, this was a normal game, I would not be low cash right now. It would I would have had time to uh, wait for that refiner to get back in there. But uh, regardless, once you drop your third refinery, um, keep an eye on where your cash is because you don't want to go low cash. Once you drop your third refinery, um, make a judgment on whether you want to continue building or stop production of infantry and get your fourth refinery down. So, what I have here, I would consider enough to be safe defensively or potentially get involved offensively. Uh, get your fourth refinery down and whether or not you're going to sell your fourth refinery is based on whether or not you're continuing to build infantry. If you need infantry desperately, go ahead and sell, get that thousand dollars and pump out what you need. If you do not need to pump infantry, having two refineries like this that allows both harvesters to dump at the same time is superior for your economy. So, once your fifth refinery is down, power, power, component tower, war factory. Don't be afraid to check your harvesters, and once they get to three or four, you can go ahead and send them in. It's kind of shitty placement, but it looks cool. Force down, get the titans going. Drop your radar. You're going to need an additional power plant in order to support the EMP. Get your EMP down. I don't think that there's any benefit into having a radar on a map this small. So I would, if it was me playing a normal game, I'd just get it out of the way. Because if the game goes long, uh, build space starts to get limited. So at this point, we are good to pump Titans and infantry endlessly. But uh, if you decide that it's going, you aren't getting an advantage enough to just end it with Titans, start getting your your seven harvesters. Keep the Titans rolling. Keep the infantry coming out if you need to. With uh, five harvesters, you can sell a ref for emergency money. Ref. Bring this uh, harvester down. Just 
so it's not so far away. You might even consider placing it here if it's not in danger. If you're against uh, Nod players, anything around this area is going to be vulnerable to artillery. So be wary about placing stuff past about this point. So now we got our seven harvesters. You can start to tech up. As you're at this point, you know, you have to use your judgment, decide whether you need to continue building um, component towers, decide if you need to build RPGs, SAM sites. You might consider, you might, you know, if somebody's stalemating you, you might want to go ahead and get that second EMP before you ever decide to start teching up. So, this uh, isn't set in stone how I'm uh, progressing here, this is just under ideal circumstances. But uh, the key, the one thing that you'll learn as you get more and more experience at the game, which is, you know, why just watching this video alone is not going to help you beat veteran players, is you have to learn how to read the situation, see what's going on, and adapt to it. But um, this information should help you, you know, last the first few minutes of the game, and you might even start winning some games. So. You know, practice doing what I just showed you here. Um, try to learn how to get it done fluidly and efficiently without any hiccups or pauses. Uh, the faster you get your your five refineries and your EMP down, um, the, the better. I mean, you want to get your EMP down first because if the enemy gets theirs down first, then uh, they might you know, be you might have to be in a defensive situation. If that is the case, uh, just remember that you don't want to have every single thing you want have globbed up like this, because one EMP shot right here will disable every single thing you got, so keep things spread out. That way they kind of have to choose. So if they decide to EMP your EMP, you know, they're going to EMP this, but it's not going to hit all this. So keep a spread. And uh, even be wary of bombers. If they have a bombers like this, you don't want them to be able to nail a bit a large group of titans. So keep stuff spread out and keep it um, keep it spread out in a way that you don't. If, if you're not paying attention to your base for whatever reason, which is pretty difficult in a map this size, but you want your a little bit of defense around your base just so that they can't land anything and not get hit. So if you just keep a, a spread of titans like this, if somebody lands a disruptor on you, I mean they're going to land it, they're going to be able to hit that building, and if you're not paying attention and not targeting it, they're going to get that building, but at the very least this one titan will be shooting on it. Which uh, is better than nothing. It's better to hurt the disruptor than to let it get the kill and get away without any damage. So think of things like that, anything that you can think of to, you know, reduce your need to be paying focus and attention on any given thing, so you can put it where it's more valuable. So, that's all I got for you. Um, if people request it, I'll do a nod, I guess, but I, I definitely highly recommend starting out with GDI. It's a lot easier to manage than nod. Yeah, best of luck. Let me get out of here. Questions, comments, concerns, let me know. Hit me up. I'll uh, be happy to throw out some further instructions and explanations if needed. Oh, there's your opportunity. Let's go see what's going on here. Maybe I'll try to record... Let me see if I can get this full to one-on-one. -on -one. Maybe I can do it in real time. Alright. So, now we can see what happens when uh, we have the latency with a player in the game. 
pay attention to how fluidly and quickly I'm putting everything down. There's no delay. There's there's no uh, like hiccups in between getting buildings down and starting the yes, next sir, one. Speed yes, in this game yes, is sir, everything. Yes, sir, if uh, you're doing anything that's yes, preventing sir, your buildings, you're preventing your MCV from stopping, you're doing yes, something sir, wrong. If your MCV ever stops, you need to adjust what you're doing to fix it. Damn, this guy's coming out with a nod in the tree rush. I definitely don't recommend that. Let's see if I can get behind his MCV. Fuck yeah. When infantry are coming at you, you want to. The goal is to get all of your infantry to attack at the same time. See how those are running while mine are attacking. All my infantry are doing damage while his are walking around. Also, it helps to like, spam the the G key for guard function. That'll help. You don't have to control every individual unit. You can just uh, press G and, and they'll uh, attack anything that's in the vicinity. One thing you can keep in mind to help you uh, not slow down barracks production while you're getting your refineries down is when your refineries are at about 75 to 80% complete. Damn it. When it's about 75 to 80% complete, switch to disc throwers. The disc throwers take a little bit longer to build, so you can count on them continuing to be in production while you have time to grab your uh, refinery and place it, and then start the next uh, set of five infantry. Anyway, I'm going to hop in here and uh, go prospect. Best of luck to all of you. Start getting good.